Okay, so hi guys. Um, this lecture today, um, Lexa and I will briefly touch on the opportunities that we have as UCLA as the Pre-Dental Outreach Committee. And we know that a lot of you guys have been staying in contact with us through either Instagram or email because you guys are on our contact list. And if not, then um, our email is right here. If you've already signed up for our lecture series and you're already on our contact list, you don't have to worry about that. But a better way to keep up with our events is by following us on Instagram. And that's also listed there on our page on the first slide there. Um, so after we talk about that, then we'll have a few guest speakers talk about what other opportunities we have through not only UCLA School of Dentistry, but also locally if you're in the LA area. So let's get going. Okay, so I'm Elizabeth Lay. I'm a D2 this year. Um, I graduated from University of the Pacific in 2019. I majored in bio and I was in the three plus three accelerated program, um, meaning I was able to finish my bachelor's degree in three years. Um, something cool that I was able to do as a pre-dental student was a dental mission trip to the Dominican Republic. And this is actually what drew, drew me into dentistry. So if you have the opportunity to do that, I highly recommend because it's just so cool to see dentistry in action. And not only that, but just immerse yourself in different cultures. Um, something else that I did as a pre-dent at UOP was conducting DAT workshops. So that was kind of fun. And then um, an opportunity that I was happy to get was working as a dental assistant in an in a dental office during my semester off. Um, so I, I was in the accelerated program. I was in the three plus three, but I actually finished in two and a half years. So I was able to take a semester off and just work and travel. And I think this is probably when I matured most during that semester off. Okay, so I'm Alexa. Um, I graduated from the University of Arizona um, in 2013, so I'm a little bit of a non-traditional student. Um, I graduated in biomedical engineering and physiology, and I was so sure that I was going to go to medical school. Um, I actually applied to medical school twice and to PA school once, so um, I was very like into medicine. I wasn't involved in um, any like pre-dental, um, I was involved in AMSA, uh, which is very similar to um, ASDA. And um, I'm very involved in like the pre-med opportunities. Um, so that's kind of why I got into uh, like pre-dental outreach was because I took like advantage of AMSA. And I also feel like the pre-med opportunities helped me in the long run. And my like biggest experience or biggest opportunity that I took advantage of was USC. I hate to admit it, but USC has a lot of good um, programs and volunteering programs. So I was really involved in the mobile dental clinic. And then they had a clinic in Skid Row um, that was fully student run. And um, I got a lot of experience there. So different pre-dental opportunities. Um, you want to really make sure that your application is well-rounded, and I'm sure that you guys know this already, but when you log into your ABSIS, which is your application, um, these are all the different categories that you would have to put your opportunities under. So it's good to kind of know this ahead of time and know what opportunities would go under what. So like, let's say you were employed as a dental assistant, so you'd put it under your employment, um, but they would still see it as your dental experience. So a lot of people, they get hung up on like, oh, well, I wanna put it under my dental experience, but it's actually like, if you're making money, then it would be under your employment. Um, so you kind of just wanna know like, oh, do I have volunteering that I can put under this category or academic enrichment? Like what would go under each category? I also recommend to keep like a running resume of things that you've been involved in, what dates, how many hours you've been involved with those things. Cause by the time you apply, it's gonna be really hard to backtrack. So try to, if you haven't started that, um, just either have it on your phone, like in a note or um, like in a document that you can just keep coming back to and maybe um, labeling the category would be like an added benefit. 
Okay, so we're going to start with the opportunities that we hold as UCLA as a pre dental outreach. And um, if you guys do have questions, go ahead and put that in the chat and we'll address them most likely at the end, unless it's super pressing and then we'll address it right away. Um, okay, so first off, um, we have our shadow days. Oh, I think this is you actually. Yeah, so shadow days is our like main bread and butter of our pre-dental outreach club. It's actually the thing that I think me and Elizabeth are the most excited about. Um, although this year it's gonna be over Zoom, um, we are still hosting them every Friday and it's around the same time that we used to do it last year. So it's from 11 to 2 p.m. And we have incorporated everything that we've done in person to um, Zoom. So we have like the student lecture and that includes like um, stats about like the current incoming class. Um, and this is, uh, this is delivered by a current, like two current D1s from UCLA. Um, so they'll kind of give you tips and tricks, like what they did, how they got into dental school, everything like that. Um, then you can do, you can talk to D1s. Um, uh, I think, I don't, I can't remember, but um, last year we had it where you can come to class. Um, I don't think we're going to be doing it this year, uh, but you can ask of the D1s like how their classes are, what they're taking. Um, and we'll have like a lunch where you can ask the D1s anything you want. Um, there's no faculty there, so you can really ask them like how honestly they feel about dental school so far. And then the like the best thing I think is the Q&A with the faculty who has worked for admissions. Um, so he is very honest, it's Dr. Margolis, and he will tell you straight up like what he recommends you to focus on for UCLA. Um, I think it's so eye-opening, it's still eye-opening to me because I've made a lot of those mistakes and uh, it's just good to know like what UCLA looks for specifically uh, because each school is different. Um, so how to get involved, these links, we'll share this um, PowerPoint presentation because it has a lot of links and forms. Um, so fall shadow days are already booked up, but we are accepting signups for winter. So if you sign up, it would be through your pre-dental club or you can sign up individually, um, but uh, we do organize it based on like school. Um, so yeah, you sign up through this form and we'd get back to you um, during the winter quarter. Uh, yes, um, just a heads up guys, there's a whole lot of links in here, but don't worry about, you know, jotting those down right now. We'll send you the PowerPoint at the end, no worries. Okay, so next on our list is our Leeway Space newsletter. And this is a newsletter for pre-dental students by pre-dental students. And it's a space for all the pre-dents to come together and share their experiences and their advice and just their journey to dental school. And this has been going on for a few years now, but this year we're super excited because we recently made um, a leeway space team, not just from UCLA uh, pre-dental students, which is, what, which is what it was previously, but now um, all over the US, as well as the entire world, we actually have international pre-dental students too, which is so much fun. It's been great being able to work with everyone um, this is a great leadership opportunity for you too, because it was like for for the two, um, what are they called, Alexa? The two uh, editors in chief, they just created like the entire thing. Like they just took it head on and they just nailed it. So if you follow us on Instagram, it's one of the links on our link tree. Definitely take the time to read that because it's incredible. Um, when this happens, we create a new publication one to two times a year. Um, this year we do already have a team. So be on the lookout for signups at the beginning of every summer. But this is also something new. If you're interested in writing, um, we're creating a like an online version of it. So like a blog, um, our presental liaisons, which Alexa will talk about later, will be in charge of that. So. We're trying to create a blog where all pre-dental students can just write their advice and their um, just share their journeys. So be on the lookout for that. So our mentorship program is something that we do every quarter. Um, at the beginning of the quarter, we pair up a dental student and a pre-dental student. And basically the dental student will help you with your personal statement, practice your interview. So we'll do a mock interview with you. 
and kind of be your mentor. Um, it's also a good way for us to fundraise for ASDA. So you're kind of helping ASDA in the long run too. Um, so two good things. And it's once a quarter, it's at the beginning of the quarter. So if you sign up, now you would probably be paired for the winter quarter, which would be um, January, beginning of January. So you would pay $20 to our Venmo account, and then you'd also sign up through the form. Um, I do recommend it if you are applying for this next cycle, for sure. All right, something else that we just implemented this year is Instagram Live Lab Tutorials. And we just had our first one at the beginning of this month. I, I saw a lot of you um, logged into that and that was a lot of fun. It's by our current D1s and they are like the newest, you know, so, so they're just recently pre-dental students. So you can ask them all about their journey, all about um, their tips and tricks on admissions to UCLA. And so that's a lot of fun. You can learn how to wax and you can also, it's like, an intimate, you know, little conversation between you and this D1. So that's a lot of fun. That'll happen the first Wednesday um, of every month at around 10 in the morning um, PST. Um, and how you can get involved with that is by following us on Instagram. Hey, so this is our newest um, baby. It's the pre-dental liaison program. So we chose five pre-dents who are incredible. Um, it was very competitive. There's a lot of people who applied. So hopefully we can admit more next year and let as many people get involved as they want. Um, but we have them for a whole year and um, basically they're gonna help us organize events to tailor to pre dent students. And um, each of these students are from different schools in California. So they can kind of um, reach out to other schools in their area. And the goal is to kind of have them be an extension of our arms. So um, as much as like they can be working, um, keeping connected with all the clubs that keep us connected to us so that um, a lot of other pre dent clubs can be involved in what we're doing here. So we will have applications for next year. Um, it starts in the fall. So look for Instagram for our ads for the applications for next year. Um, so we'll. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. We'll talk about other opportunities that are available through the UCLA School of Dentistry. So not just like our pre-dental club, but through UCLA in general. And we have our guest lecturer, our predecessor, Kevin Maida. He was our previous uh, pre-dental uh, outreach committee chair. Um, he gave us big shoes to fill, and he's going to talk about ASDA um, and how to get involved as, as a pre-dent. Well, thank you guys for introducing me. It's always a pleasure to speak when, uh, with you guys, and as your predecessor, I'm super proud of what you guys have done so far. So everyone here, all the pre-dental students, be sure to stay on top of what, everything that Alexa and Elizabeth are doing, but I should introduce myself first. So I'm Kevin Maida. I'm a D3 at UCLA, and I'm currently the ASDA vice president for our chapter, as well as I serve on the district board for ASDA D11 as one of the pre-dental co-chairs. Um, so if you guys don't know what ASDA is, basically it's this organization that protects and um, serves the rights of dental students and their interests. And so um, you guys can obviously read the slide, but I want you guys to understand, basically ASDA will pass legislation or pursue legislation that will effectively help dental students. So for instance, one thing they do is for, let's say, the um, national boards or the licensure exams, they try to modify these or regulate these in order to make them more equitable and fair amongst all dental students. So currently, as it stands, uh, most licensure um, exams require live patients, and this creates a lot of dilemmas in terms of timing of treatment, as well as whether or not um, patients are basically blackmailing students to be their patient for this exam. Um, so they're trying to pass like mannequin exams basically. And there's a temporary, um, I guess, bill that's allowing this to happen for now, but they're hoping to continue to pursue this. So in essence, as does this organization that will serve you not only in those regards, but other like traditional regards and the actual school environment and your well-being. So in terms of the different levels of ASTA, there's a chapter level, which would be UCLA. 
there's a district level. So UCLA falls under district 11. There's 11 districts. Um, each district has about six schools involved. And then there's the national level, which is where like the, as a president of all of the United States um, oversees, you know, the different districts. And it's a really great way to get involved and be a competitive applicant. So on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about some nuances in terms of how you can get involved. Um, but for now, um, let's go down to the next slide. Okay, so the District 11 conference is actually this weekend. There might be a chance that you guys can still sign up, but basically there will be different speakers um, and different breakout sessions in which you know, all pre-dental students and dental students will attend and be able to learn and grow as leaders and care providers. Um, in addition to this, for you as pre-dental students, there's networking opportunities. So we'll create effective spaces for you guys to meet dental students and to be able to socialize with them and learn from them. And these are students from all over California. So Western, UOP, UCSF, Loma Linda, USC, and UCLA will all be there um, available to speak with you and talk with you. Um, in addition to that, you know, you'll be able to talk with vendors and receive raffle prizes. Wow, that's annoying. Um, and then uh, the one thing is that signups are limited. So if you wanna sign up, you need to sign up immediately. And one, some ways you can do that is by following D11 ASDA or dental students. Um, and I wanna say that because spots are limited, you may not be able to get into this. However, there are multiple ASDA conferences for you guys to attend. And it'd be a great way for you guys to boost your resume and just show that you're dedicated to this organization. Um, so there's the District 11 conference, obviously, but then there's the National uh, Leadership Conference, which is in mid-November, November 13th to the 15th. And they're still having, um, registration is still open and alive. So you guys can even sign up for that as well. And I've seen pre-dental students that attend that and they subsequently attend dental school, you know? So these are things and ways for you guys to get involved, and especially during Zoom, costs are low. So it's easier for you guys to attend these conferences as well. And so, to stay up to date on those things and all those conferences that we offer in um, ASDA, I would highly recommend following these two Instagram accounts, D11 ASDA and Dental Students. Dental Students is the national Instagram. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Kevin. So now we have Stephanie Peacock. Um, she is also a D3 and she's in charge of the Hispanic Student Dental Association. And she's gonna talk about um, how you could be a translator for the clinic. Okay, hi guys. There's, uh, so yes, I'm one of the co-presidents of HSDA. I wanna note that it's not just for Hispanics, it's just a fun organization for everyone. It's just our target um, patient population and people we're advocating, advocating for are usually of Hispanic descent. Um, but we're also for just minorities in general and we do a lot of work with um, um, other clubs in the school that target other minorities. So, so we have several opportunities for you. Um, the first one is if you guys haven't heard, our school has a clinical translator program. And during non-COVID times, this means that you can come to our clinic after you've been approved by us and translate during appointments. And it's a great way to kind of see what clinic is like and get to meet a dental student and do a bunch of cool things like that. Um, now, during COVID, just for safety reasons, because we don't have you guys fit tested for N95 masks and um, we don't want to expose you guys to anything without there being a real necessity for that, uh, we have changed it so that now we do document translations with you guys. So we have clubs that will create like OHI pamphlets or instructional videos. And in the past, we've um, sent those opportunities to be translated into a lot of different languages, not only Spanish, but um, Korean, Chinese, a bunch of other languages that you guys might uh, be fluent in. And we have them translated so that now these clubs have different languages for their educational materials that they can use for people all over LA. And yeah, I wanna reiterate, it's not just Hispanics, it's not just Spanish, it's any language. And basically what we do is you send in um, that form that's linked there, which you guys will get when they send out the PowerPoint. And then we kind of do a small short interview with you and your language and someone will be there that speaks your language. 
so that they can kind of assess your skills. And if you're approved, then you sign a waiver and then we add you to our contact list. And anytime we get an opportunity that's for you, we'll email everyone that speaks that language. Um, and another thing we have, just now we finished our Spanish lessons, if you didn't hear. We're also letting pre-dentals from any school and even people that are dental students from any school join these Spanish lessons if you want to. It's a five part series. Um, because we can't offer you selective credits, there is a $5 membership due that you need to pay. But the great thing is you also get access to not only our Spanish lessons, but any other events we have, um, like some volunteer events, like a couple months ago, we did a school supplies handout. So you can join that type of fun thing, our socials. Like we had a salsa tutorial that was really fun. Um, so when are these happening? So our translator program is always accepting people. You just kind of need to fill out the form and then we'll contact you. Uh, Spanish lessons just started today and they'll be offered until um, November 18th and they're every week, mostly on Wednesdays, but there's one Monday date. And how do you get involved? So to become a translator, you fill out that form. Um, to join the Spanish lessons, you fill out that form as well as the, the second form linked at the bottom to become a a member and pay dues. And that's basically it. Awesome. And those are Thank you. our communications at the bottom. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Um, oh. So um, I'm going to talk about the UCLA volunteer program. Um, it's kind of tailored towards like pre meds, but I did this as a pre dent and I got involved in the ortho clinic this way. So um, currently, it's on pause um, for recruitment and activities um, due to COVID, but I did contact Lily Zhang, who is the manager of this program, and she said that it should be returning to normal very soon, um, so it'd be a good idea to just keep checking the website. Um, I don't have the link on here, but if you do search UCLA Volunteer Program, it's like the first link that you can find and you fill out a form and then Lily would contact you and you'd go to like a training and you'd get a badge and um, you'd basically be like an official volunteer. Um, and then what I did is I contacted Francesca Moore who's uh, a, in the admin for the ortho clinic. And I told her I'd like to volunteer and usually you volunteer once a week. So it's a very regular basis. Um, so at least like devote like three to four hours each week um, to volunteering. And I thought it was a really good opportunity. It's also good to get involved in UCLA volunteering if you specifically want to go to this school. So now I'm going to pass um, the baton to Emily Duong and Tanya um, to talk about basic dental principles. Um, they know a lot more about this than I do, um, but talking about how you can get involved and uh, when it starts. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm one of the BDP lab coordinators this year. Um, so what is BDP? It's a lecture and lab series taught entirely by dental students. So we start off with the two quarter lecture series and then students who do well in the past in the class and pass the class will be allowed to take the laboratory course afterwards. And it's taught by third year dental students. And normally um, during times when it's not COVID, we have the students come into lab and we help them with the different clinical exercises like drilling and filling, doing impressions and casts, um, different things like that. But because of COVID this year, it'll be entirely online. But one special thing about that is now we're able to reach more students rather than just the ones at UCLA. So we're partnering with um, ASDA Predental to reach students from other schools. And typically we max the class at 100 students, but now we're able to accept up to 300 students because it'll be on Zoom. Hi, my name is Tanya and I'm the other BDP lab coordinator. So um, we do have both a lecture portion and a lab portion. The lecture portion is a two quarter course spanning both the winter and the spring, and that would start January 6th. And to enroll in the lab series, just like Emily mentioned, you would have to have taken the lecture course um, 
prior to that. So it would be like the 2020 academic year or yeah, the 2020 academic year. And uh, that is a one quarter course. And we hold that both in the, in the winter and the spring quarter. And um, the winter quarter, it would start January 13th. And for the spring quarter, it would start April 7th. And um, both the lecture and the lab series are usually in um, during Wednesday evenings and they alternate. So um, you would have about five lectures per series per quarter um, with the lecture series being around 5.30 to 7.30 and the lab series being 5.30 um, and ending in 40 minutes to an hour. And um, if you would like to get involved, uh, you could go to the BDP uh, website and signups would start for the general public, <coughs> sorry, uh, November 16th. And for PDSOP, um, we'll announce the date later, but it's going to uh, open up a few days earlier. And the lecture series will cost about $60 and the lab series $40. And if you, you have any questions, feel free to email us at UCLABDP at gmail.com. And um, this is a great opportunity to learn more about dentistry. And uh, we hope to virtually see you there if you're interested. Really quickly, you guys, um, there's a question in the chat. Will the BDP lab be virtual? Yes, the BDP lab will be virtual. So um, we'll focus, we'll still hold all of the lectures um, for the lab portion, but unfortunately we won't be able to go into the lab. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. I think this is something that you should definitely get involved in as a pre-dent, um, especially if you are a UCLA um, pre-dent student. I think this is an incredible opportunity. I wanted to mention, someone earlier asked um, what would be academic enrichment. BDP um, is an example of something that is academic enrichment. For sure, that's like <laughs> a perfect academic enrichment like example. And I'll also bring up another opportunity um, later on uh, for academic enrichment in case you guys are curious. So um, for local in-person opportunities, you definitely wanna take caution. This is kind of obvious now during um, COVID time, but um, if, especially if you're like assisting, um, make sure that you wear an N95 mask um, if it's like an aerosol procedure and just keep your distance. So I'm going to pass it off to Omar. Um, he gave us a really good tip about the Santa Monica Aesthetic Dentistry Office. Um, basically, uh, what he said, it's an incredible opportunity for pre dent Sorry, is that my, my microphone? <laughs> or is someone not muted? Jenny, oh, there you go. Oh, OK. Um, so he's going to talk about his experience, like how to get involved. Um, and yeah, I'll pass it off to him. Thank you, Alexa. Um, hey guys, so I'm Omar. I'm a current D3 at UCLA and I'm in the international dental program. So if you have a dental degree from abroad, you join UCLA in the last two years as an international dentist, and then you can take your DDS. So I'm considered as a D3. And also I serve as the UCLA as the co-chair of communications, which is pretty amazing. Actually, when you're in dental school, you have to join as the. <laughs> it's a role. So, you have to. <laughs> you have to. Like, it's a class. <laughs> so uh, I was fortunate to be in this office, which is called Santa Monica Aesthetic Dentistry. It's a general dentistry clinic. Um, everything done there is done through microscope dentistry. And the dentist there is called Dr. Ganesh. So um, he's an amazing mentor and everything that he does is done through uh, the screen, through the microscope. So even if it's like aesthetic dentistry, surgeries, root canals, you name it, everything is on a screen that you can see and it's highly magnified. So it's a, an amazing uh, learning experience. You learn a lot. And uh, once you volunteer, of course, you're not gonna do the heavy duties of being a dental assistant, a DA. So in the beginning, um, uh, you just uh, apply for the position if you want to volunteer, and then um, they'll interview you. And if, if they think you, you've, you're a good fit, then you'll start as a volunteer. You'll choose your days. 
um, and they're very, very flexible. So um, in general, when you're uh, accepted for the volunteering position, the DAs will teach you how to set up, break down a room, how to sterilize instruments, the general workflow in a private practice clinic. And after usually uh, volunteers, after a few months, they can work as a DA. So you get paid after. Um, so uh, if you get that position after like being a paid DA, you can assist Dr. Ganesh in his procedures. You can you will learn dental photography, how to use the Canon camera uh, with the macro lens and how to actually take photographs for the smile design cases, which was an amazing experience for me. Like people pay a lot of money uh, to learn how to uh, take pictures for smile design cases and you, you will get the chance to do that for free. So. So it was amazing. Uh, along with that, you will learn how to take x-rays. You'll take impressions digitally with, an, with a CAD cam and also with alginates, which is, uh, believe me, if you know how to take alginate impressions before going to dental school, you're way beyond uh, most of your, your classmates. Um, along with that, you will learn how to do te like teeth whitening, uh, bleaching on, re on patients. So that's a patient exposure kind of a procedure that you are allowed to do. Uh, you can do night guards, whitening trays, so things of that sort. And next slide. Yeah, so um, so I'm just showing you a, a couple of pictures there. Um, uh, the one on the left is the sterilization um, room. So everything is very, very uh, high end. You just like you, there's a button on the floor, like you press on it the something opens up so so that you don't touch anything with your hands so it's a very very uh, nice infection control uh, office you learn you learn a lot um they have five different cubicles over there and as you can see on the right uh, how how usually they look and you will see everything on the tv like the big screen and um, you'll see all the procedures up close which is which is amazing so um, usually volunteers choose Saturdays, they choose Wednesdays, whatever day you want to like choose, you just let them know. Uh, they're currently accepting uh, CVs and uh, for the volunteering positions, I think um, two, two, two positions right now. And they want to take people who are still sophomores or juniors at UCLA um, uh, who can commit for a minimum of four to six months. So we just emailed them through this email and uh, just mention UCLA as the Pre-Dental Outreach Committee or just mention my name, Omar. And uh, I'm on really good terms with them. And um, generally, like the office is run by Dr. Ganesh and his wife. And they have uh, Bahar in the front desk, which uh, she is a USC grad. Um, it's a very nice family environment. You'll get along really well. It's super fancy office and above all, Everyone who volunteered there, they, they got a letter of recommendation from Dr. Ganesh and they got accepted into numerous schools from UCLA, USC, Pacific, UCSF. So um, of course, uh, being there, having this opportunity, getting the letter of recommendation, you will, uh, it will definitely boost your, your application. And uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome, thank you. I think getting involved in like a really good clinic is kind of all you need um, as like a pre-dent. I think um, if you're lucky enough to get involved in a clinic where you can have like a really good mentor, um, that is key because they will not only help you get into dental school, help you get a, like a great letter, um, but they, you'll get a lot of good like dental experience before you even go to dental school. So thank you, Omar. Um, so I'm going to talk about the Vinmar Solutions Wax Up Worksheets. Um, so I actually did this um, the year I was applying, and they did it in person at UCLA in the fourth floor um, preclinical labs. Um, so it was basically a waxing course um, similar to the waxing course that you take as a D1, and it just helps you kind of prepare um, how to do like wax ups for like crowns, um, fridges. I can't remember. I, it was like a two, two part course. So you have one part where you do it for one weekend and then you do a second part another weekend. And I'm not sure if it's the same this time, but if you complete both weekends and you do fairly well, um, then Mark Hunt, who's the instructor, he'll actually write you a personal recommendation letter. Um, that you can use. So if you really need an extra letter of recommendation or 
Um, if you just want to get better at your waxing skills um, before you go to dental school, this is a really good way. I know that they're doing them through Zoom this time. And so what you'd do is you'd buy a wax kit. Um, this is actually the link to their website. So you'd buy a wax kit and a worksheet. Um, it's like a laminated worksheet. And then you would actually build up your crowns from that worksheet. Um, it looks really cool. And um, if you're really interested in doing it, but you don't really wanna buy the wax kit just for that weekend or for that day, um, you can email us and um, I can offer you my wax kit for the day if you live uh, nearby, um, just to save you some money. Cause I know it can be kind of expensive if you buy the wax kit and the worksheet. So um, this will probably be only for like one person each weekend, but um, they have a lot of different dates. Um, so hopefully we can have you guys try that out because um, I think it's kind of a cool opportunity to do um, if you're looking for like an academic enrichment um, activity. Can I offer an alternative? Yeah. Your stove and like just a dental instrument to do <laughs> old fashioned waxing. Just heat it up on the stove. Yeah, if you have like a gas stove. Or a Bunsen so burner. Some, for, yeah. if for some reason you have access to a Bunsen burner. That's kind of like old school like waxing right there. That's actually I think what he used when he taught us is we had little Bunsen burners with just like a small um like wax tip and then you I think so too because I did this back. course as well yeah yeah so hack like <laughs> that'll definitely it. save you some money because you have to buy a wax kit if you go to dental school anyway so um might as well save it for dental school that's, that's a good so hack that you mentioned that stuff because over the summer when we were taking dentures that's what people would do they would take home their wax ups and just use their stove and go <laughs> for the dentures <laughs> And just a side note, we're not liable for any <laughs> fires that happen. <laughs> I definitely have heard of some sketchy moments with people trying to do that. Um, so yeah, a lot of opportunities are on hold, especially with like shadowing or assisting. Um, but things are returning shortly. So just be on the lookout for clinics and things that are having new opportunities. Um, so for research, um, we looked into this and the School of Dentistry is actually not accepting research volunteers um, currently, but there are some labs that do accept undergraduates right now. So I just put this link of like how to find a mentor or research opportunity. Um, but as far as like my own personal advice, it would be to look at what research labs um, kind of tailor to maybe your major or something that you're interested in. It doesn't have to be dental research. Um, I think all research is good to be involved in, um, and you don't need to be involved in research. It's only if you really want to. Um, to just email the PI, express interest, uh, read some of their papers, the most recent papers that they published, um, talk a little bit about how you know, like, or how you're excited about their research or, you know, what you would like to offer, and then um, start a conversation from there. So, um, so a lot of, you know, research labs might not be accepting researchers. So just keep emailing until you get an opportunity. Um, I also think, um, so when I was, uh, I did a couple different research like opportunities, um, but you can also get class credit. I don't know if they do that for UCLA, but um, you can also ask your, the PI if they can also do like, you can, be doing research, but you can also get like a one credit for that and that can help boost your GPA. Um, so opportunities that you might know. So me and Elizabeth at the beginning of summer quarter, we asked all our current like, um, uh, like the D1s and I think, I think D2s and D3s, I can't remember. Um, but we asked them like how uh, what they did as a pre-dent, what school they went to, and we compiled a list of different opportunities associated with each school. Um, so uh, if you go to this link, you can see um, the school associated with all the opportunities that might be good to get involved in or look up. And if you have any opportunities that aren't on that list, 
um, that you have been involved in, please email us and we will definitely add them because we wanna keep a running tally of different things that people can be involved in. All right, so now I can open up to questions and I can also read the chat. Um, it looks like Elizabeth has been answering them. Are there any questions that haven't been answered? Let me see. Yeah, we've answered all of the questions in the chat. Okay. If anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask anything, now's the time to do so. I also have a question for you guys. Like, have you found it really difficult to find like shadowing experience or is it like not been an issue at all? I'm just kind of curious because we think it's probably been an issue, but maybe it hasn't been, or maybe it's not hard to get into, get opportunities. From what I've heard, it's been really difficult to find opportunities to shadow, especially towards the beginning of COVID since a lot of dental offices, even when they did open, um, they're being like very cautious about how many people are getting into the office. Um, but if you can make connections, that's the best way to get what you want, you know? Like if you have a family member, or if you have a really close friend who is a family member who's a dentist, that's the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. Is UCLA accepting virtual shadowing? You mean through, you mean like of dentists? Like, of dental like, students? like Zoom shadowing. Um, yeah. As far as I know, oh, did someone say something? Oh no, I was just gonna say like, they do it like off of like live on YouTube and like they'll give you like a quiz for like attendance. So like, I've like been to those. I was wondering if they, like, if they're accepting it. Um, for oh. UCLA, I don't think they're doing any virtual shadowing. Um, I think that's something that me and Elizabeth would like to look into, but we're you, not really in the clinic yet. Wait, so. do you mean like, if you're applying, do they accept virtual shadow hours as shadow hours? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> Um, that's better than nothing. Definitely put those down, but then specify in the comments or in the description. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I also had a question about the virtual shadowing. Um, so if we didn't want to put it down in the shadowing, the actual like shadowing section, is there another Part of the application that you recommend we should put it down in like just general like extracurriculars or something else yeah let me take a look at the opportunities um you could put it in dental experience it's a little bit yeah that's true don't want to put it right in shadowing although i feel like that would be the best category for it yeah if they do label it as shadowing i would definitely still put it under shadowing even though it is virtual shadowing. Okay, thank you. Giselle in the chat had a good suggestion. She said to try and find nonprofit organization dental offices. She said she's gotten a call back from a few of those. That's a good idea. Hi. Hi. I had a oh, quick hi. question. Hi. Yeah, go for it. Um, about signing up for the BDP lecture series, I went to the website and I can't find a sign up sheet. Um, I was wondering if it's through Instagram or through a link. Um, when I click on lectures, it asks me for a password. Um, and so, yeah I, yeah, I haven't been able to see where that's. Emily or Tanya, do you guys want to step in for that one? Our signups are not released yet, but if you go on the website, there is a spot where you can join the mailing list and then we'll send an email once the signups are open. Awesome, thank you. Hi, I was wondering if you know if um, UCLA School of Dentistry or other dental schools accept pre-dental students to like maybe shadow or like, I don't know, help out in your clinics? or if that's 
Is that even a thing? So I know pre-COVID and um, is you have to do it through the volunteer program. Um, they are, UCLA is a little bit more strict about what they allow pre-dental students to be involved in. Um, I was told like not to even like, you can't really assist. Um, so um, it's good if you just want to be involved in the clinic, um, but you won't be assisting um, as like a pre-dental student. So if that's something you're looking for, um, probably better to do it in a different clinic. But yeah, you would uh, register through the volunteer program and then you would reach out to um, Francesca. I suggest reaching out to Francesca um, and she would help you get a volunteer opportunity in the clinic. Um, so I did the ortho clinic and I just scanned, um, I scanned a lot of casts and put them into the system. So it was like 3D patient casts. Um, but you would be working like kind of in the back room um, as a volunteer. I see. So you say we should email Francesca, like, if COVID, like, dies down? Um, yeah, so just keep checking the UCLA Volunteer Program uh, website and see if the sign-up or if the program restarts. And then you would sign up through the, uh, the Volunteer Program first, go through the training, and then once you get your badge, then you can email um, the school of dentistry and tell them you'd like to volunteer. I see. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, actually, Alexa and, uh, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth, do you know if uh, the pre-dental um, outreach here at UCLA can help any foreign chain dentists get an interview? Someone is mentioning in the chat. Um, we don't have like power over the interview process. Um, but if they're talking about like maybe a mock interview, um, I think the opportunities that we have, um, because a lot of them are virtual, like the virtual lecture series and all that stuff, a lot of international students could still maybe attend, um, or even like our YouTube page, um, to look at like a lot of the help with it, like missions, um, but the closest thing that we have to like maybe getting an interview is our Q and A session with Dr. Margolis, where they can ask questions about like specific questions to Dr. Margolis, who was on the admissions committee um, on like what he recommends to focus on for UCLA. And then if you haven't already, definitely go back to our YouTube channel and watch our PPID lecture from last time because Urbashi and Masuma did an entire lecture on that and it was really helpful. People really liked it. So, Thank you guys. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Any last questions? Hi guys. I had a question. Hi. Um, so nice seeing you. Um, about the mentorship program, is it also going to be offered in the spring? And if so, like what months does that cover? Yeah, so the mentorship program is offered every quarter. I don't know if you are on the quarter system, but um, so it'll be, spring will be April, May, and June. Yeah. Okay, and then the information about that will probably come later, right? Yeah, it'll come towards the end of uh, winter quarter. Okay, okay, thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else before we sign off? Going once, going twice. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, this thank you so time. much. Yeah, feel free to email us, of course, as always, and then follow us on Instagram. We're always on there and responding to people, so don't feel hesitant to bother us there. <laughs> And thank you to our lovely speakers. We couldn't have done it without you guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you all. All right, bye guys. Good night. Thank you guys. Good thank night. <laughs> this will be uploaded to YouTube in about a week too. So we'll send the email for the, um, the slides, for the links, and then um, send the YouTube link as well. All right, thank you. Bye.